Welcome my friends, remember we built this PC for the price of Mac wheels, which is around $400, right? So check this out, over here I have 4K raw sequence, I have an 8K raw sequence, I have a 12K raw sequence, and I'm gonna show you how you can edit it on this cheap PC. It doesn't even have a graphics card, but you can edit 8K raw footage, no frames dropped. Let me show you how right after this. Are you sick of seeing activate Windows message on your desktop? Well, it's time to activate your Windows and do it cheap. Go on to whokeys.com where you can find official license keys not just for Microsoft, but all sorts of game CD keys, including Steam CD keys, Origin CD keys, Uplay CD keys, and so on. If you're looking for Windows 10 Pro key, for example, then all you have to do is search for Windows 10 Pro, select the license, and add it to the basket. Use the code TN20 to get a 20% discount. Once you have the license key on your email, click here, here, type in your license key, hit activate, and you're all done. Check out whokeys.com in the description below, and don't forget to use the code TN20 to get a 20% discount. Okay, so if you are wondering what's this little whistling in the background, I've got my MacBook over here recording the screen recording on full HD and it looks like it's a little bit struggling recording this on OBS over here. So, you know, just ignore that little whistling sound over here because the fans are going mental. So editing raw footage often you think, whoa, I need a very expensive or very beefed up PC to edit 8K, which is not actually true in, in essence, okay? Just hear me out, okay? You don't have to have a very powerful PC. This over here has only four cores and there's no graphics card. The graphics card is built into the uh, GPU so we're using actually an APU and we integrated graphics on the actual processor is driving this all over here and as you can see in a moment and um, you can edit it with no problems I'm gonna show you how uh, also it's important to know that you can do this on other editing programs as well like DaVinci and uh, Final Cut and uh, in our case, we're using Adobe Premiere Pro to show you how this works, but obviously the the idea is the same on every single program, but you just have to find kind of where this program allows you to do that. So if you were very already very sneaky and you know what the actual answer to this is, then you probably saw already that I have this little button plugged in over there or kind of enabled. This little button over here is proxies button and if you don't know what proxies are then basically proxies are uh, like a substitute files to your original raw files let's say you have a 8k raw file or we have a 4k raw file over here let's press play as you can see we're playing it back and it is zero frame dropped uh, obviously it is a quarter of a resolution but you don't need the full resolution because it's just in the corner over there and it's it's playing it back, no problem. This is red raw 4K, okay? We're not talking about just some kind of B raw 4K that is very efficient codec. This is red raw. Oh, you don't believe me? Let's go this over here. You can see a red R3D raw file. It is 4K file, 24 frames per second or 23.976. So it's very, very demanding file type to actually use for the processor, but it is playing it back very normally. So basically what Proxy does is uses these original raw files, for example, 4K raw file, what we have over here, and creates a very small file that is very easy to kind of edit. And while you're editing, instead of using these 4K raw files, or whatever resolution for, for uh, raw files to play back, it uses these small files, that you have actually made to use and use as the playback speed. So, you know, at the moment, it's actually showing that this is 4K uh, raw file and this is what we're editing, but because the proxies button is toggled, we are actually using like 480p files or even smaller and you can make your own whatever resolution file you have. So let me just show you now how, how this works and just to prove you that this all works, I showed you already, this is 4K over here. We have an 8K sequence over here. This is some kind of a, let me show you, that it is 8K. It is 8,196 times 4,320 pixels. So which, what, 35 megapixels every single frame or something like that. So if you press play, as you can see, zero frame drop during playing back. 
and it's playing back these red raw 8k files like no problem 12k okay this is now absolutely bonkers first of all to have a 12k video over here this is from the black magic urso 12k and um, i've already created a proxy and you know it's actually been stretched over here that's no problem it's because the proxies i created are slightly different resolution than the original file but just to show you that it can play it back even like this so you can edit it and then when you using color grading then you can you know skip back to your original files but we'll get to that in a moment but basically when i press play okay it is playable right we have dropped five frames over here on quarter of resolution but we're playing back 12k resolution as a proxy on this absolutely cheap pc over here as you can see it is doable so let me show you how you can do it on premiere pro i have already created these uh, 4k clips over here let me see the 8k is the 8k everything i think yeah all of the 8ks have been done proxies as well but basically let's see the 12k here so i have this one file that i've already dragged on it so let's drag the other one on and this file as you can see when i press play this is the full resolution now when i press play it is not be not going to be able to play it okay we're dropping more than five frames. We're dropping 47 frames. It's actually still surprisingly, <laughs> surprisingly amazing to play back. This is without proxies. This shows how awesome the B-Raw is. So let's play it on eighth, um, one eighth of a playback time. And we're playing back 8K on this. So I think if you play in 8K, there's no point of even doing the proxies over here. Uh, just put it as, one eighth of resolution and we're playing it back this is ridiculous i didn't actually test it before doing this so i'm very very surprised i'm playing this back on this absolutely cheap of a computer 12k footage look at that there's 12.2 thousand pixels going across it, this is absolutely insane it's absolutely it, this is just mental i can't believe that Anyway, let's say if you want to create a proxy for this clip, what we do is we go onto folders where your files are and on the right click, you can see there is create proxies. You go on the proxy and then it says create proxies. So once you're over here, you're just gonna choose QuickTime. You have two like kind of formats to do proxies. Um, so it depends whether you're on your Mac or Windows, you just have to decide sometimes one works better than the other one um, we're going for h264 over here and these are your actual stock presets low resolution medium and high resolution proxies now but i have created my own which is super low preset over here which is even smaller file than uh, this low resolution proxy so this is like a 480p file i think so you can use that one or let's say we're going to use one of these so basically make sure that you have the destination selected as next to original media because that is just the easiest to organize your files. So wherever your project is, uh, that it's gonna create these proxy files next to the original media. You know, you have your video files, let's say from your whatever Panasonic GH5, for example, and then it's gonna create another folder next to it called proxies and all of the Panasonic GH5 video files, if you wanted to, it's gonna create proxies on the other folder and it's easier for the program to find it. Let's say you're gonna put everything on a memory stick or a hard drive and wanna edit it on another computer, then it's just all in that project file there and when you open the project again the program knows okay i'll go find the proxy files and you can use it on like a laptop or anywhere else so it's going to be very fast and very efficient if you have it on another let's say sst or another place somewhere then when you copy the folder of your project file with all the video files and things in on on a hard drive and want to edit it on a laptop for example it can't find the proxies and you won't be able to use the proxies you have to recreate the proxies which takes time because you have to render them and things like that if you select the next to original media file in the proxy folder folder click ok it's going to create the proxies now when you go to this um, adobe media encoder which is actually what it's going to use to create the proxies over here you can see i've already created the proxy for the previous 12k file but it's just going to start rendering it itself so it's just going to do it in the background when you press play you can see by frame by frame it's going to render it so if i have my task manager open over here it's using all of the cpu over here um 100 utilization tries to render it all uh, a lot of memory is being used and even a lot of GPUs being actually utilized here for uh, rendering this clip. All you have to do is wait until the clip is finished, which might take quite a while actually, depending on your file sizes and resolutions and things like that. But, um, you know, 
it can take some time. While it's creating proxies, the good thing is if you're on Premiere Pro, you can actually still keep editing and looking around, obviously, but it's gonna be very choppy now because it's doing that in the background, as you can see. Oh, it takes a lot of time to do that. Now, while it's creating these proxies, uh, let's talk about some of the things that you have to keep in mind when editing with, with these proxies. When you create these proxies, you're gonna lose a lot of color information. And if you actually see the color looks completely different, let's go to these uh, 8K clips and let me see. Okay, this is probably the easiest to see over here is um, this B-Raw, okay? This is the original B-Raw file. And if I put the proxies on, uh, try to not get distracted by the squeezing of the footage, but if you see the skin tones, you can see that it's going much more magenta over here. Let's put a little bit of a, like a color on so you can see a bit better. If we add a bit more saturation to this, you can see over here, actually um, kind of overworked my CPU trying to do different things at the time because this small PC can't do that at the same time. So it actually failed creating the proxy because I was just playing around here showing you stuff. But um, you can actually just recreate that if you wanted to. So. Over here, I've added a little bit of a contrast and saturation to this. Can you see the difference now here? Okay, this is the color graded. Now, if I put a proxy on, this is the original clip. Look at the proxy now. I'll put the proxy on, wait for this to go to the squeezed image, and then you can see how, can you see how the colors change? Look, it's gone completely magenta, and you're gonna lose the color over here. Never mind the squeezing of the footage, but, Basically on the proxy when you're using it. I don't recommend using it for the color grading Okay, edit your clips all the way through and then for the color grade try to go back to your original clips because then you're not using or losing any color information when uh, using proxies or non-proxies if that makes sense. Now another cool thing is that if you are creating a new Premiere Pro project for example, so let's say that I'm opening Premiere Pro and it's going to ask me to, oh do you want to create a new project or things like that, then there's few settings over here that you can automatically make whatever footage you pull into the project to completely automatically and uh, completely automatically create proxies for this. So let's create a new project for example, let's put it somewhere over here, we'll create a test and over here you've got a few usually you already press enter over here and it's going to do it but it's quite helpful to check these three things over here in general we're going to leave that alone I'm not going to talk about this scratch disk is if you want to like create these proxies or somewhere else so some parts of the project like captured audio preview videos to be saved somewhere else so you kind of your um, project is working faster because it's reading them from different SSDs or whatever. But what we want to click on is the ingest settings, which is the third tab over here. So ingest over here, and we're gonna say create proxies. So, you know, we're gonna take the ingest box and then create proxies over here. Basically here you can see um, whatever files you're gonna create. So let's say the low resolution proxies, what you had over here, there's loads of different formats over here at the moment. and Proxy destination, same as project, that's the best one you can get or what you can do over here. But you can see that the low resolution proxy is 1024 times 540. So it's a 540p footage. Uh, it is a VR1 pass and it's a one megabits per second or max 12 megabits. So it's kind of between 10 to 12 megabits per second uh, over here. But if I created my own over here, this is max is eight megabits per second and it is 480p quality over here. So let's say if you want to create these low resolution proxies and we're going to do that now. Okay, we've created this project and let me pull some of this 8K um, footage into there. Red footage, uh, where is our, okay, I think that is, there we go. So let me just pull this one in and see what happens. So this is 8K, right? Look what it's gonna do straight away. It's opened the media encoder straight away, as you can see. And what it's automatically doing is creating proxies straight away, it started rendering. So when you dump your footage over there, it's just gonna take all of your footage and start creating low resolution proxies over here. As you can see, this three uh, 8K red footage is going pretty, pretty fast how it's rendering over that now. Boom, okay, that is done now. Um, let's pull that onto our timeline. So our timeline over here, proxies enabled. Let's, let's press play and it plays beautifully already. Now, if I unselect the proxies, check this out. Okay, uh, zero frames dropped, press play. It's absolutely not playing it. 24 frames play. It's 
struggling as anything over here, okay? We lost almost the whole second of the clip without proxies. I hope this video helped you to understand a little bit more of what proxies are and also that you don't necessarily need an upgrade to your PC or your computer when you want to edit a bit more or you know harder files or raw files all you have to do is just find a good proxy preset create smaller file sizes i know it's going to add a little bit of time where your computer is rendering these files but go make yourself a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and uh, you know come back and then you can edit it with no problem without actually spending lots of cash understand that this time of you know world where maybe a lot of people are losing jobs or it, it's a little bit uneasy how, how you can get money and things and I understand that probably people are not thinking about buying their computer or a new computer first this is not like a priority they just need the jobs to get done then this is like another tool how you can get the jobs done I know it adds a little bit more time like I said before but you can get the jobs done and edit it even on a computer like this that is 400 pounds or dollars it's ridiculous. Uh, let me know if you knew about these proxies before. I'm sure a lot of you probably knew that, but if you didn't, it would be interesting to know if you learned anything new and let me know in the comment section below. Hit that like button, it would actually make a massive difference and would help to grow the channel without any extra cost to you. Thank you very much guys for watching this and uh, you know, we'll see you soon. Subscribe if you haven't already and you know, check out this build video about this PC if, if you haven't done that yet or any other PCs like the one behind there yeah it's uh, coming out soon <laughs> okay guys and uh, we'll see you soon adios